Hi, hope you're all doing good. In this video, let's focus on the following topics starting with suture length wound length ratios. So if you review literature, Jenkins stated that deep wound disruption is associated with suture length wound length ratios of 2 is to 1 or lower and that wound disruption can be prevented by applying a suture length wound length ratio of 4 is to 1 or higher as a higher ratio indicates that the tension increases to a lesser extent as the wound wound stretches. Let me know the question in specific. If you need any additional information, I'll update that accordingly in the description part of the video. Right. Moving on to the next question pertaining to astringents. So as you know, astringents are used in order to precipitate proteins. So agents that act by reacting with and precipitating proteins in superficial cells and form a protective covering on the surface. And this as a consequence has the following functions which include protection against bacteria and irritants, decreasing exudation and also address capillary oozing when applied to bleeding surfaces and also you can see various vegetable and metallic astringents. Vegetable astringents include tannic acid and catechu. Metallic astringents include aluminum salts, zinc salts, ferric chloride, silver nitrate etc. Right. Moving on to the next question. Extracted tooth, which of the following is most commonly associated or attached to the root apex? So as evident in the image and also as given in Schaeffer's, it is periapical granuloma that often remains attached to the root when the tooth is extracted. See if there are any additional keywords pertaining to this question. If necessary, we'll update this question in the description part as well. Right. Moving on to the next question water plethysmography so what is this all about so plethysmography is an instrument for measuring changes in volume within an organ or whole body and the word is derived from the greek terms plethysmos which means increasing or enlarging and graphos which means to write so you can see the image of plethysmography in the treatment protocol of lymphedema limb volume measurements are a mainstay evaluation tool and volumes of both extremities are always measured at each visit using water plethysmography and the difference in volume is designated as excess volume and you can review further information as given here and moving on to the next question topical fluoride agents so in case of patients with high caries risk white spot lesions which are the following topical fluoride agents is preferred so if you review literature we have different agents as you are all aware of so in one of the articles it's mentioned that the management of high caries risk patient requires the use of several preventive interventions and behavioral modifications besides the use of topical fluorides for children over six years of age and adults both office and self-applied topical fluoride treatments are recommended and for office fluoride therapy at the initial visit a high concentration agent either a 1.23 percent APF gel for four minutes in a tray or a five percent sodium fluoride varnish should be applied directly to teeth four times per year so this is a ratio pertaining to one article and if you move on to another article here it's clearly mentioned that WHO notes that there is no doubt that fluoride varnishes have a significant caries reducing potential and also there are various review articles in vitro in vivo studies have also shown that varnishes supply fluoride more efficiently than other topical agents with reductions in caries ranging from 50 to 70 percent see if this information is helpful in answering your query and also you can find a table where you can see the risk category and the age category for recall patients in high risk category you can see varnish application at six month interval or varnish application at three month interval right now moving on to the next question uh, there seems to be a question pertaining to dobutamine all i got is the keyword dobutamine so here is some information pertaining to the same so it is a cardiac stimulant as you know and also you can find some additional literature pertaining to dobutamine it's an inotropic agent dopamine or dobutamine may be needed to augment the pumping action of heart and thyroid crisis and this dobutamine is a derivative of dopamine right so see if this information helps you in answering the question now moving on to the next question 
question I got some keywords pertaining to clinical features so based on that it's obvious that the question is related to ectopic ACTH syndrome here is some literature for your reference so patients with ectopic ACTH syndrome usually present with severe and rapidly developing metabolic signs most prominently anorexia myopathy and glucose intolerance and as you know Cushing syndrome due to ectopic ACTH secretion is a form of ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome caused by excess secretion of ACTH by a benign or more often malignant non pituitary tumor right I hope it's clear now moving on to the next question pertain to caries promoting and karyostatic elements trace elements here is some literature pertaining to the same so we can see various karyostatic elements like molybdenum vanadium fluoride strontium and lithium so fluoride we're all aware of isn't it and caries promoting elements include selenium cadmium lead manganese copper zinc etc in fact in one of the articles it's mentioned that selenium makes tooth susceptible to caries attack the mechanism was not explained and they said that further studies have to be done in order to find out the exact mechanism right now moving on to the next question IV injection site common IV injection site so let's review some literature pertaining to the same so if you observe this image you can find common intravenous sites on inner arm as well as on dorsal surface of hand and one of the articles it's mentioned that midline catheters may be placed in basalic, cephalic or median cubital veins of upper arm or anti-cubital area with the tip residing in cephalic or basalic vein in the upper portion of the arm at or below the axillary line. See if this information is helpful in answering the question. Now moving on to the final topic, uh, there seems to be a case based question related to dilaceration. Do confirm the same, we'll update additional information accordingly. So abnormal bending, so during extraction of tooth, so these are some of the keywords I received pertaining to the same do let me know and also if you need any additional information pertaining to these topics drop a comment we'll update that accordingly in the description part of the video i hope it's clear wish you all the best love you all